Um, glory to God. Well, good to see everybody. Yeah, I, as y'all know, I wasn't here Sunday. Um, Janie and I took a a uh, physical, mental weekend, and um, we're 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 getting more and more seeing more and more counsel coming for the ministry. They need to take time off, and well, and uh, take so even take sabbaticals, which we've never done in, in thirty years. We've never taken a sabbatical. Um, and I, the most I miss in a year is two Sundays. I think one year I missed four. In all these years, I've missed four. I've missed four Sundays um, to do, to to rest to do something different. You know, um, in the in all these years, it's usually only two Sundays to rest. Uh, if I'd ever miss another Sunday, it was because I was preaching somewhere else. So, um, and we just uh, with her, with her upcoming surgery, she's not going. We're not going to get our spring break. So we just I said I'm going to take her somewhere. Before there, because during spring break she's gonna be sitting at home, and I'm gonna be rebuilding the deck. <laughs> Woo! You can tell I'm excited, right? Hallelujah! All righty. Well, good to see everybody tonight. Welcome to Faith and Victory Church. We're glad to have you. Um, you may have seen if you were just joining us a little bit earlier our thermometer, the uh, the debt destruction thermometer. We have dropped under twenty four thousand, um, which means we're down eleven thousand five hundred plus since December. Um, which is just, I mean, when you look at it, you just go, I mean, because in the natural, you go, how? I mean, you just, you just don't see how that's happened. But it's happened, okay? And it's just going to continue to go this way, and we're just going to watch this thing disappear. And as I was saying earlier, um, it appears at this point from our calculations, we're going to be done by the 1st of December, right? At first, middle of December, we're going to be debt-free. So we're not even going to make it into next year. Uh, with this, our original thing that God told him was you'd be out in less in 18 months, which would have been June, of, end of June of next year. So six months have disappeared. Oh. Hallelujah, because of, because of the, you're you're stepping up to the plate, and uh, we're just excited. I'm thrilled. <clears throat> you just don't know how thrilled I am. Praise the Lord. Well, let's get into the word tonight. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> let's look over here into Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. We're talking about a subject everybody loves to talk about. Hallelujah. Uh, you guys love it. There are, there are a lot of people who don't like to talk about this. And um, we, could, we could actually pick up um, verse 18 of this passage. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, that is Abraham, and, and said, Blessed be, or Abram at this time, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thine enemies into thine hands. And he, that is Abram, gave him, Melchizedek, tithes of all. Tithe, he gave him tithes of all. So tonight we're going we're to begin teaching. I don't know if we'll get through it. If we do, praise the Lord. If we don't, well, what's new? Um, okay? That's just how it works with me. We just got to roll with it. Amen? We're talking about the power of the tithe. Hallelujah. You know, uh, probably a misunderstood subject in many circles for the New Testament church. Um, I, I find it most misunderstood among the charismatic people. You don't have a problem with the Baptist tithing. They tithe. Okay? They really, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're staunch about it. But, you know, you get a lot of charismatics coming along, word of faith charismatics, and they'll come along and go, well, you know, I'm free, and I'm not bound. That's law. You know, there's, there's, we don't tithe on just We just give offerings. And they, and they say all these things that sound really like they're spiritual and they're really in touch with the things of God, but they're not scriptural. Okay? Just because you got a woo-woo and a chill doesn't mean it was the Holy Ghost. Okay, because I've seen, I've heard some people say some stuff that had woo woo and chill behind it, and it definitely won't God. Okay, no. So we have here Abraham, Abram. Okay, Abram. Okay, yeah, there we go. So where's the H go? And it doesn't go till later. Okay, he's tithing. Now I'm not going to try to spell Melchizedek. We're going to call him Mel, all right? Okay, okay. Um, Melchizedek, uh, you know, and do we, does any, now, who is Abraham? Abraham, he becomes Abraham, and he is the father of our faith. 
<coughs> he's the father of our faith. Okay, um, and he is. We're, we're to do it. We're to follow the example of our of, uh, of Abraham. We're to follow his example. We get that out of New Testament scriptures. Who's Melchizedek? Well, according uh, to the New Testament, Jesus Melchizedek is a type of Jesus because it says that Jesus is a priest. Jesus is a priest. Forever. After the order of Mel. Like again, I'm not even going to try to spell it. Okay. Okay. I guess what I can do is this. I could go up here and go, uh, Mel. He's not even in there. No, not my notes. Okay. See, that's why I didn't do it. I'm, I'm just going to, you know. Mel, Melchizedek. All right. Yeah, don't you just love that? That's why we're going to call him Mel. Okay? A.K.A. Mel. All right. Okay. So Jesus is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. New, New Testament says that, that he receives tithes there, okay? But we'll get to that later. So then Deuteronomy chapter, so we, we just read Genesis, Genesis 14, 18 through 20. And then we're going to go over to um, Deuteronomy 14. Twenty-two and twenty-three. All right. Okay. And it says here, Thou shalt surely tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the field bringeth forth year after by year. Thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God, in the place which He chose to place His name there, the tithe of the corn, of the wine, of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Now, here again, the word Lord. Small caps. So when we know where this came from, this came from the Hebrew letters, Y-H-W-H, -H, again, Yahweh. And some people spell A-H or E-H. It just depends on where you're looking. Or Jehovah. Same, same Good gracious, Eddie. Okay. What is this? Covenant. This is in reference. Whenever you see this, there's a direct correlation between that and this. Covenant. Okay? This is the covenant name of God. This isn't just Adonai or Elohim, you know, a References to God as far as His majesty, His glory. This is specifically related to this covenant. Okay, so the, the four letter, the, the cap, the small caps is the uh, Y H W H, Yahweh or Jehovah. It is the covenant God. It is this. So now this is stated. He says here that you may fear the Lord, the covenant God, thy God. It is in reference. So this tithing he's talking about here is in relation to covenant. Okay, and so Deuteronomy says, you know, that we're supposed to tithe all the increase of the seed, and the field brings forth year after year, and the, um, and you'll eat before the the covenant God, okay, in the place He shall, shall choose, and you'll tithe your corn, your wine, the oil, the first things of their herd, your flocks, that you may have learned to fear the Lord your God. And so now we have here a relationship between the covenant and tithing. There is a unique relationship financially between tithing, uh, between our covenant and tithing. And, now, this is Old Testament. Yes, this is Old Testament. Okay? But God says, I'm the Lord that changes not. And we will get to some, we'll, we'll get, you know, we'll get over into the New Testament. Um, I, I just get really frustrated when people just instantly go, that's the Old Testament, that's not for me, when they don't study the rest of the Bible. And they, and they kind of do that because it's an out for them. 
It really, you know, they, they think they have an out in not obeying the Scriptures or they have an out in, in their liberty in Christ. And, you know, they, they take partial Scriptures and really show their lack of biblical study. Okay? Because they really didn't search the Scriptures out and un understand something. They, they don't under and from a theological perspective, they don't understand that there are things in the Old Covenant that weren't simply applying to the Old Testament Jews in the natural. They were, that, they were aspects of God. And it didn't change just because we got the New Testament. Okay? Often, the way God dealt with man changed. Okay? We were no longer under judgment like they were. I mean, you, you know, if you go out and you do something wrong, or you walk on a sun, you don't get stoned. Okay? The, but the covenant relationship of God and his people and the covenant relationship of God, who God is, remember, we the quote, you know, that God's, you know, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that provides. Right? I mean, how many charismatic people? You know, I mean, that's who we are, our, we run with. How many, the seven, you know, the seven redemptive names of God? You know, um, redemptive names of God. And of course, now we, we primarily use Jehovah, but you know they want to say Jehovah, you know uh, Rapha. We're just we're going to use a few, okay? The Lord is our what healer, okay? They want to say Jehovah, um, Jireh. The Lord is our provider. Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner of victory, or captain of victory. Some 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 will translate captain of victory. Banner of victory. Uh, you know, and there's, you know there's, there's more, okay? We just covered three of them real quick. We're quick to quote those. Oh, he's my Jehovah Rapha. He was a healer in the old covenant. He's a healer today. He was a provider then. He's a provider today. He's our victory then. He's our victory today. Glory to God. But here's a covenant relationship between tithing and, and, and that same Jehovah. Because the prefix of all these is this, this here, here, the Y-H-W-H, the Lord. The covenant God, the covenant God, the covenant God. So there's a, there's a unique relationship between that covenant God and tithing. So you can't go be going around quoting Jehovah Rapha's my healer in the new covenant going, but I don't believe in tithing because that's Old Testament. You see, it didn't work that way. But people do that. And so what they do is they, they typically demonstrate their lack of being a, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, they drop off the stuff they don't like. Okay? Let me say something. He has to be God of your pocketbook, too. He can have anything he wants, and why don't you tithe? Well, I need, listen, and I say this, you know, and it is a valid assessment. I won't say criticism. It's a valid assessment. If you can't believe God for um, getting out of debt, you're not going to believe God for a new building. Okay? Let's face it. You're not. We got people who can't believe God for a hangnail. They don't believe God for terminal stage 35 cancer. I mean, that's a complete exaggeration. I know. I know stage four is, is, is the highest, okay? Okay? We, we get there. We get to the place that, you know, we're trying to live a certain way when we're, we're not there. All right, and but we want him as Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah. We want all the covenant aspects. When over here, we won't even obey him in this covenant aspect. And and it doesn't work that way. Okay, it, that's not how things operate in the kingdom. Now, so let's let's look at some reasons why to tithe. <clears throat> other than just flat flat out obedience. Obedience is good. We'll just we'll go ahead and just write that up there. I don't I'm not I'm gonna, I don't have scriptures up there for that. But you know, tithing, reasons. Okay. Obedience. I don't have to obey. I'm under the I'm under grace. Stop talking the Bible. Get rid of your narrative. Take your glasses off of your narrative glasses that skew everything into your little narrative of of how you want to view everything and go read with a an open heart. 
and a submitted mind to the Spirit. Okay? I don't want to say I open mind. I want you to say, because you want your heart open to what the Spirit would say. How the teacher of the church, the Holy Ghost, would lead and guide you. Don't go in there with your predisposed because you listen to so-and-so's tape series and you love it because you know, you're liberated from doing anything. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to give. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to obey. You don't have to submit. I had somebody tell me that one time because they're under grace. Okay? <clears throat> okay? So one reason is it's just flat out obedience. Okay? Tithing. Puts us in remembrance. I'm saying here, when you're tithing, you're looking at uh, of all the things you put, you've gained and gotten, and you come back and you, you, you're reminded this is the blessing of the Lord. And out of that blessing, you're honoring Him, okay, in accordance with His Word. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 26. We're going to read verses 1 through 19. I know there's a lot to read, but you know, in order to cover this subject, we've got to read a lot of Scripture. Instead of giving, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really care for the, the, the slick, modern-day packing of phrases that sound great but carry nothing in them. Okay? You know, we come up, we, we all, all, every preacher now, because they're, they're trying to market the ministry and they're trying to be, you know, be the, the one that has the word that everybody wants to hear, wants to come fill their stadiums up and their churches up and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. They're looking for phrases. And they got this phrase. And they got that phrase. And everybody's just, oh. And they run around quoting that. Um, and, 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 but inside of that, there's nothing. There's, no, there's nothing that's producing faith, nothing that's guiding them to grow deeper with God. It's just they got a little catchphrase. And the same thing we do, in, we, do, we do in politics, we do it everywhere, we do it in anything we do. Everybody's looking for the catchphrase. Um, for example, let's use a real secular one, abortion. Until the, abo the, the murdering, damnable, going to hell abortion industry got the phraseology changed from Pro-abortion and, and, and um, anti—I mean, and um, uh, uh, pro-abortion and anti-abortion to choice. All the polls showed that America was against it. But when they changed the dialogue to pro-choice, man doesn't have a right to control your body and all this stuff. It swung and swung quickly. The woman's got the right to control her body, and all was done through marketing. So then, you know, the, uh, the other side tries to come back and, and get, get rid of the anti-abortion stigma with pro-life, okay, and, and, and which is true, but, the, the, uh, but you know, uh, the narrative is going to fit into this, men can't control my body, you know, men are evil, all, all men are, you know, they're, uh, they're misogynic and they hate women and they're, they've had power too long and it just fed into that whole demonic narrative that's coming out of the kingdom of darkness over this planet. And if you don't like what I just said, turn me off. Don't look at me anymore. But I really don't care. And I do say that without any reservation. All right? And I don't want any letters. I don't want your emails. I won't read them. Because I'm right on that issue. All right. So, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1 through 19. It shall be that when you come into the, into the land, which the Lord, again, every time we see that, look at that, underline that. L O R D caps. That's that's we're back. We're back over here. Yahweh, the Lord, the covenant <clears throat> that the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and passes it, possesseth it, and dwellest therein. That thou shalt take the first of all the fruit of the earth, and thou shalt bring uh, of the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee. And maybe I'll just say Yahweh. Okay, that way we're, I'm just going to reiterate. I'm not changing the Bible. I'm just going to use this term word instead of capital Lord, so that we know what we're talking about here. Okay, so you get this, this idea of the covenant God. Uh, would you always rather not use Jehovah? I could use Jehovah. Same, same thing, okay? Um, of the land that Yahweh, thy God, giveth thee, and shall put into a basket, 
and shalt go into the place which the Yahweh thy God hath chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt go unto the priest and, and that shall be in the and say unto him, I profess this day unto Yahweh uh, thy God, <clears throat> I am come out of the country which Yahweh swear unto our fathers for to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thy hand down before the altar of Yahweh thy God. And thou shalt speak and say before the Yahweh thy God, Assyrian was ready to perish was my father. And he went down into Egypt and so and there with a the few became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians evil and us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And we cried unto Yahweh. We cried unto our covenant God. Okay? <clears throat> we cried <coughs> <clears throat> we cried unto Yahweh, the God of our fathers. Yet the, and Yahweh heard our voice and looked upon our affliction and our labor and our oppression. And Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with great ter terribleness, and with signs and wonders. And hath brought us into this place and hath given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. What are they doing? Let's keep reading because they're being reminded of what? The blessings of God. They're being reminded of the blessings of God. Okay? And now behold, I have brought forth the first fruits of the land which uh, thou, O Yahweh, hast given me. And thou shalt set it before Yahweh thy God and worship before Yahweh thy God. Thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which Yahweh thy God hath given unto thee and unto thine house and thy and thou and thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. And when thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of increase to the third year, the, the, the increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hath given it to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. There was, a, there was also an extra tithe that was given every three years that took care of the priesthood. There was an extra one that, that could, took care of widows and orphans and all kinds of those extra tithe okay um and thou shalt say before the lord or yahweh thy god i have brought away the hallowed things out of mine house and what did he call that what did he call the tithe he called the here in, here in uh deuteronomy 26 Cause the tithe hallowed thing means holy, holy or separated. I have brought the hallowed things out of my house. And also have given him unto the Levite and unto the stranger. And love that. Unto the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments which thou command me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in my mourning, neither have I taken away aught thereof of any for any unclean use, nor given aught thereof for the dead, for I have hearkened to the voice of Yahweh my God. And have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Look down from thy holy habitation, from heaven, and bless thy people Israel. And the land which thou hast given us, as thou swearest to, unto, unto our fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. This day the Lord, uh, Yahweh thy God hath commanded thee these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Thou hast avouched. Yahweh this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. And Yahweh has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he has promised thee that thou shouldest keep all of his commandments and to make known high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor that thou mayest be a holy people unto Yahweh thy God as he hath spoken. When they, they, they listed all that God had done for them. They began to talk about all that God had done for them. Brought them out of Egypt. Brought them out with a stretched arm. You know, showed signs and wonders. Brought them into the place. Gave them the land that flowed with milk and honey. Now, what? We're going we're gonna to tithe. 
But before they tithed, they declared what, how God had blessed them. They had declared how God had blessed them, how he had delivered them, how he had brought them into the land he promised. And in response to that, they say, we've brought the tithe. We didn't keep the hallowed thing. We've taken it out of our house. We didn't use it. <clears throat> we ob you did all this, and so we're obeying. We're bringing the tithe. We're bringing that out of the house as you commanded. We didn't use it. We didn't eat of it. We didn't take it. Because why? Because it's, it's a hallowed thing. It's holy. It's God's. The way God wanted to use, you don't get to determine. You don't get to say how God's money is used. And this is one of the big misconceptions in the church is that the, you know, that the deacon board gets to tell everybody how the money's spent. Now, I'm not against having people with business sense helping you, um, but when they're running the church, and they're telling you what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. You know, Lord, keep them humble, we'll keep them poor. You know, um, <clears throat> and we're not putting new carpet in. You know, that, that carpet's been down here for 40 years, it looks fine. It stinks. It's got stains all over it. You're young and spilled grape juice on it 20 years, and get it out, still can't get it out. Okay? I thought I muted this. Apparently not. All right. Okay. All right. Maybe I got it that time. So they come up before God. They, they're quoting here. They're going, Lord, you brought us out. You know, and really, now we're not just talking about Lord. We're talking about the covenant God. Brought the, there's people are talking their covenant talk. They're not talking to Elohim that God is more than enough right now. That's not their mindset. They're not talking about Adonai, you know, uh, the Lord in his majesty and his glory. Those are, those are fine, but it's, that's not what they're doing right here. They keep making this, they keep saying this over and over and over and over throughout this passage, Yahweh. Why? Because the, what they're talking about now is a relationship between their covenant and tithing. Their covenant God and tithing. They could have said Elohim. It would have been fine to have said Elohim if that wasn't the point that was trying to be made, that it was the covenant. And so deliberately, this word is used because it wants to make a connection between tithing and covenant. God doesn't have anything done and recorded in Scripture by mistake. It's all deliberate. It all has a purpose. Okay? I mean, we love where God appears to Abraham and says, I am El Shaddai. You know, I am the God that's more than enough. You know, uh, you know the many, the many breasted one. I got more supply than you have need. We love that. In that place, it didn't say Yahweh. He said El Shaddai. Here, in this passage, he says El, he says Yahweh, because he's, there's making that distinct connection between the covenant God and His blessings and tithing and blessings and tithing is in direct proportion in relationship to the covenant God. It's a distinct connection there. And so we have to understand that. That there is a connection between the covenant God and tithing. That covenant and tithing. That is very important we understand that. we got a new covenant established upon better promises. But it doesn't eliminate all the old stuff. Because we still want to go back and grab Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Nisi and Jehovah Desitkenu and Jehovah Shama and all those other names and talk about how great they are in the New Testament. When we get over here and start talking about, well, they, talk, they had a relationship between the covenant of God and tithing. Well, we don't talk about that. See, we want him to be our Jehovah Rapha and supply everything. We don't want to talk about him wanting us to tithe back to him out of that blessing. Not, that's bondage. That's law. Well, then all that's law. Hello. I said all that. All the, if this is law, then this is law. It doesn't apply. And we know. We believe with all our heart this applies. Okay. You just don't get to run out here and say, "Well, we want the covenant God who provides." 
We just don't want to take our part of the covenant and tithe. Okay. Well, but you know that shows me? You didn't take enough time to go back and, and be put in remembrance of his blessings. I'll never forget one of the church members coming to me a number of years ago and came into my office and sat down, and um, their finances were a mess. They really were. They were an absolute mess. They were struggling, and they sat down and said, Pastor, I can't afford to tithe. And they, they honestly, they, and listen, I understand. And you know, your heart of compassion wants to go, and you want to be, you want to be the spiritual, you know, the, the great one with such wisdom. <sighs> That they look at you and go, you know, and they hear voices going, oh, at how great your wisdom is. That's okay, God understands. No. The hardest, I think it's maybe the hardest thing I've ever told anybody in counseling in my life. Because I knew their finances were a mess. I knew they didn't have any extra money. I knew they were in a bad spot. And I looked at them. And said, you can't afford not to tithe. And they sat there. They didn't well and cry and, you know, bawl and squall. Um, <clears throat> I said, trust God. Put him to the test. Honor him. You can't afford not to tithe. You're bringing a curse on your finances. And they went out. And that next Sunday, they tithed. And they tithed. And it wasn't between three and four months they came back and said, Pastor, I just got a big raise at work. And it more than makes up how much I was tithing. I'm now making more money after tithing than I was before, before tithing. And it kept going up from there. Okay? It was not easy counsel because your heart wants to go, we don't need the money that bad. But you can't follow feelings. That's where you can't follow feelings. You have to follow the word. Because feelings wants to go, here, I'm going to create a little ribbon. Okay? We have another little ribbon here. I'm gonna pin, we're going to pin it on our suit saying, we're the, we understand you don't tithe people. And I feel better about it. Because you've got to have a ribbon. When you, you want to feel good about something, you've got to have a, you gotta have a ribbon. Okay, because it just makes it makes you look more whatever than other people. Um, I get fed up with that stuff. Okay, uh, <clears throat> anyway, God's word says the, there's a, there's a covenant relationship we got going on here, and I can't I can't circumvent this relationship because I feel bad for where you are. Why? Because this is the way out. This is how you're going to get out of it. By recognizing you have a covenant with God. And he's brought these blessings on you. And now you're going to be put in remembrance of those blessings and tithe to your covenant God. Because you do want him to be your Jehovah Rapha. I mean, I'm sorry, Jehovah Jireh. You want him to be your provider. Sure. You want, to you want to be able to confess, my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Better read the rest of that that came before it. Because Paul wrote that to the church when they sent once and again unto his necessity. Even the, the church he was, you know, even one church didn't even fulfill their obligation. But this church sent unto him more than once. And he sent, sent back to them and said, my God's going to supply your need. Not just a blanket statement, you know, you're out here calling out, I'm under grace, I don't have to tithe, I don't have to give, I don't have to go to church, and he's going to supply all my need. You've misquoted scripture. <clears throat> You've misquoted it. Because Paul did not write that to the guy who was doing that. He wrote it to the church who was giving beyond, who with the extra. Okay? And that's why that scripture was written. So, quite frankly, if you're not doing that, you don't qualify for that scripture. Sorry. Are you legalistic? No, I'm Bible. Okay? All right? So, we're here, we're here we are with this, this relationship, and, and God says in Deuteronomy, chapter 26, 
You know, they came out and they start talking about Yahweh this and Yahweh did that and Yahweh brought us out and Yahweh delivered us with a strong arm and Yahweh brought us into a land that flowed with milk and honey that Yahweh promised our fathers. And then we're going to stand and say, now, Lord, hear from, hear from heaven. Hear from heaven. Okay? <clears throat> we have reminded ourselves and now we address our, 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 our Yahweh. We address Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh, hear from heaven. We did not keep the hallowed thing. We brought it out. And we brought it and gave it to the Levite, to the fathers, to the widows, as you commanded us. And you're going to bless your holy people, Israel. Well, that's what the Old Testament Jew. Look at the New Testament. We're called the Israel of God. The church is referred to as the Israel of God. <clears throat> we're not a Jew inward, outwardly. We're a Jew inwardly. Paul even wrote, so he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, but he who is one inwardly. Whose circumcision is not of the flesh, but of the heart. Okay? So, we bring this over, and we begin to understand that tithing, you know, we, we tithe out of obedience, but tithing puts us in remembrance of what he's done for us. He's brought you out. He's delivered you. You honor your side of the covenant. By giving that, which represents your life. Tithing represents money. You've gone out and you've worked. We, we, we're on a barter system. Back here, they tithe the oil, the wine, the corn. Okay? They're not tithing the money, so to speak. They're tithing possessions. Why? Because that's how they bartered. I'll give you three lambs for two, you know, for uh, a, a um, bushel of corn, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It was a barter system. When you go to work and you come home with a paycheck, you've bartered your time for, 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 for money, but it's a barter system. It's still a barter system. Okay? The tithe represents part of your life you're giving back to God. Because it represents the time you spent earning that or acquiring that. And you're saying, and you're coming back and saying, and all he had asked for is a tenth of what you have. As, you know, because of his blessings, he only asked for a tenth. Didn't ask for, you know, didn't ask for 90% until you could live on the tenth. Just bring me the tenth. So they, here's how you blessed us. Now we're going to take our corn and our wine and our oil and our cattle and our flocks, and we're going to tithe of that. That all represents the effort, the time of our life, the sweat equity, as it were, to acquire the prosperity, et cetera. And we're going to honor God because he's blessed us. He's blessed our hand. He's blessed the fruit of our land. He's blessed everything we've set our hand to. And now we take that which represents our life. 10% of just just 10%. Just a 10%. Just that 10% was to be an honoring system in a, in a connection system in the covenant that we recognize that the blessing came from God. That all the work you put in there would not be blessed without God blessing it. Amen. Can you say hallelujah? Praise the Lord. And so, um, I'm about running out of marker board here. All right. Let, let's see if we can't get at least one more in before we leave tonight. How about that? Um, the, the third thing we want to put up here is tithing. I, I could, yeah, I could put tithing, reasons for tithing. Okay. Okay. Brings restoration. Sorry, I was coughing there a little bit earlier. I may have had a little bit of that, the, the, the yellow snow out there. Kind of getting my throat there. It is snowing pollen. <laughs> got out, got out of school today, and got out of the car, and across the back of our building, there's nothing but big old pine trees, and the sun was shining, and you could just see it <laughs> floating through the air. I mean, just pouring down like it was pouring down rain. But I always wanted the yellow vehicle. I got one. <laughs> my my black Jeep is yellow. Second Chronicles. Okay. Second Chronicles 31, 1 through 12. All right.
Let's look here. Now, now, 2 Chronicles chapter 31, verse 1 through 12, tithing brings restoration. Now, when all this was finished, all of Israel there were present when they went out to the cities of Judah and break the images in pieces and cut down the groves and threw down the high places and the altars of all Judea, uh, Judah and Benjamin and Ephraim and also Manasseh until they had utterly, utterly destroyed them all. And then all the children of Israel returned every man to his possession and to their own cities. Hezekiah appointed the courses of priests and Levites after their courses, every man according to his service, and the priests and the Levites to burn offerings and for peace offerings to minister and to give thanks and to praise the gates of the tent of Yahweh. He appointed also the king's portion of his substance for burnt offerings to, uh, to know, for the morning and evening burnt offerings and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and for the new moons and for the set feast, as it is written in the law of Yahweh. Moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites that they might encourage, be encouraged in the law of Yahweh. And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of corn, wine, and oil, and honey, and all the increase of the fields, and the tithe of all things brought, um, them in abun brought they in abundantly. And concerning the children of Israel and Judah, they dwelt in the cities of Judah. They also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep and the tithe of holy things which were consecrated unto Yahweh their God and laid them by heaps. <clears throat> in the third month, they began to lay the foundation of the heaps and finish them in the seventh month. Now, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, five months, they're bringing stuff in. And when Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the um, heaps, they blessed the Lord, or Yahweh, and his people Israel. Then Hezekiah questioned with the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. And Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of Yahweh, We've had enough to eat, <clears throat> have, had, had, have left plenty, for Yahweh hath blessed his people, and that which is left is in great, this great store. And Hezekiah commanded to prepare the chambers in the house of Yahweh, and they prepared them and brought in offerings and, and tithes and dedicated things faithfully, uh, over which Conaniah the Levite was ruler, and Shemiah, or Shemiah, his brother, was the next. And they had been in sin. There had been a, you know, there had been a return. They come out of, uh, out of sin, worshiping idol, you know, idols and all this kind of crazy mess. And um, <clears throat> the word goes out, tithe. This basically is a tithe. And all of a sudden, they're bringing in stuff. And the, the Levites, the priests were about to starve. Now, remember, when you go back and study, uh, when Israel came into the land, 11 tribes got possessions. The Levites got nothing. They were to be ministers of the Lord, and they were to live off of the tithe and the things of the people brought to the house of the Lord. The, the people were to take care of the priesthood. They were to take care of the holy things of God, the ministry of, uh, of the servants of God through the tithe and, 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 and offerings. But primarily, primarily, the tithe was the main source other than special offerings that maybe the God would institute or have them bring. But the tithe was to be the sustaining, ongoing process by which the ministers, the house of God, the temple, were all funded. That was God's plan. They weren't to have a physical possession. They weren't to get a house. And, you know, they weren't to get, they weren't going to have a parcel of land, you know, 60 acres and, you know, and all this. They didn't get that. They, 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 had, they had places to live, but they didn't own stuff. They you know, whatever was on was, was part of the temple. You know, they didn't get land. They didn't get land to raise cattle on. To raise, they didn't get all that. They lived off the tithe. And if they lived in a different city, that third, that third tithe every three years was to make sure they took care of all the Levites who were scattered around in different places. They were to be taken care of. Not, not just living at the temple. If they were that tribe, they got taken care of because they couldn't own the land. Okay? All right, and when and when so when they return and they and begin was what name it for God is used here throughout this passage, Yahweh, covenant. Start bringing stuff in, and they bring in in heaps, and they for five months they haul this stuff in. The priests have got more than enough to eat to do any of the stuff.
restoration in tithing. God will restore you. So God will restore you. He'll put you back in place where you're supposed to be. You can get your finances so messed up, you think, oh, dear God, I'll never get out of this. You can get in get your finances. Not exactly. Um, are you here? Not exactly what we want. We don't want, we don't want to be in sin. But you know what? It happens. People get into sin, and they mess up, and they get into, they get into tough places. But when they repent, and they come back to God, um, and then you're told, now you need to start tithing. You know, get back to tithing. They start tithing again, and the blessing of God comes. And it came in such an abundant manner. They just brought stuff up. They had, they just, in five months, they had too much. They had way too much. They had to start storing it. Somebody say hallelujah. And breathe. I said the local church has to do it. But when restoration comes, we see, we see the increase of tithing. We see the local church become, blessing begins to come back in the local church. And they're able to do what they're supposed to do. And that's what happened here. The priests were almost starving, not, not having enough. But when Israel tore down the groves and the altars and all that stuff and began to bring tithes, all of a sudden they got everything they need. The, the house in figurative allegory, because it was the house of God, okay, is suddenly fully supplied in that process of restoration. And that restoration took place through tithing. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up right here. Uh, those that joined tonight, thank you for joining us. And uh, you know, some I get I get shout out, shout out back to you. All right. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, don't forget that those that are watching. We, we, our our debt thermometer has gone under twenty four thousand. Uh, we have now knocked off five thousand eleven thousand five hundred plus dollars in, since uh, the first of the year, um, and we're just thrilled, thrilled, super thrilled. Amen. You can't imagine how thrilling that is. Oh yeah, I mean thrilling. Glory to God. So we're going to see uh, uh, the next um, debt paid off by the first of June. That one was at, at 6000 at the beginning of the year. It's going to be gone by the 1st of June. Okay. Months after that, the next one's going to be gone. So by the 1st of, uh, by the 1st of August, that next one's going to be gone. <clears throat> uh, three, three months ahead of schedule on its payback. Right, four months ahead of schedule on, on the payback on that. And that'll leave us two that with all the extra money going to, to two places, by, by, by the 1st of November-ish, I mean 1st of december -ish, so we paid all, all paid off. We're going into 2019 debt free. 2020? God, no. well, we're going to be debt free. How about that? Hallelujah! All right, praise the Lord. Uh, so, if you're ready, if you, Brother Joe has the the uh, giving stuff. Uh, if you're giving electronically, go ahead and ring that bad boy up. Hallelujah. Um, if you want to be a part of our debt destruction campaign, you can look out there, and they they have information that's online, uh, or not, or on, or on our. Website. If it's not online, right, the second Jesse will pop it up, I think. There she popped it. Up. There it is. Online giving. You can give electronically through PayPal or through Square Cash app. Uh, Square Cash app, better way. But you know, if you, well, that's fine. That works. We have an account that comes into, and. Um, if you want to be a part of watching us see this debt removed from the church and watching, being able to do, go do other things besides paying debt, um, praise the Lord. We want to be we want to be debt. We want to be able to take that money and use it for the kingdom and go get things done. The Lord gave me a plan. We're working it. You guys joined up with it, and it's happening. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. Father, we thank you for those that are tithing and giving and being a part of what we're doing right now in the name of Jesus. Bless their lives. Call take place and and, your, and watch them restore watch you uh, watch them understand your blessings see them restored and see the things of god work in their behalf in jesus name amen and amen god bless you those of you watching us by internet thank you for joining us tonight the lord bless you and remember this this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith until next time we'll see you uh the, the next time at church on sunday morning praise the lord hallelujah